We're going to talk specifically about gender identity claims now. Gender identity has a huge range and so it's quite difficult for us to talk in generalised terms in a video like this. So you need to take from this video whatever matches with your case. It is important that throughout your case you know that you are entitled to be treated with respect and to be referred to and addressed in your gender identity. Using the name that you choose, it may still be necessary for your birth identity to be registered, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be treated at all other times in the name and the identity that you've identified for yourself. One of the things that you'll need to think about in your case is how you describe your gender identity. That may be very simple, you may feel that you know very clearly what it is, but it may be more complex and it may involve you using a description rather than a label that somebody else has thought of. And it's your identity, so however you describe it is right. There is no other right and wrong way. Whatever your gender identity is may be different from the way that you are expressing your gender identity. Those two things aren't necessarily the same. And you may not want to express your gender identity or have the opportunity to express it so far or at this time. And so you need to be clear with your lawyer and with the Home Office about what your gender identity is and what your issues are around expressing your gender identity. Your gender identity may involve some kind of transition at some stage, and might even involve a medical transition, but that isn't an essential part of a gender identity claim. And if anyone tells you that you need to be planning a transition or have had a medical or uh, social transition, that isn't the case. When you're preparing your statement, or when you're talking to the Home Office in interview, one of the places to start will be just talking about your everyday life, your experiences, how you want to live, uh, if there are constraints on how you live, which mean that you're not expressing yourself in the way that you'd like to, and whether that stops you from having your gender identity as you perceive it. Let's have a think about some questions that might help you when you're writing your statement and they'll help you to prepare for what questions the Home Office might ask you. So perhaps the starting place might be, when did you first perceive your own identity as it is now? Maybe that's a very recent thing, maybe that's how you always felt and that's your own personal explanation and your own personal story. There is no right, no wrong answer. Think about how it was when you were younger. Did other people perceive that you were different in your gender identity in some way? That might have even included them thinking that your sexual orientation was different. Some people do get confused between sexual orientation and gender identity. Was there a time when you started to express yourself in a different gender identity from the one that you were born into or assigned at birth? That may not have happened, that may not have been possible or appropriate. And neither of those is the right or the wrong answer. It's just explaining what happened in your life. When you're thinking about submitting evidence to back up your case, that can come from a variety of different sources. Witnesses can be particularly important, but there might not be any witnesses in your case who know enough about you or anything about you or your gender identity. And if you haven't got a witness, that doesn't mean that your case can't succeed. But if there should be witnesses available, then try to persuade them to support your case by writing letters or statements themselves. Those witnesses might be family members who are prepared to write and tell them about your life when you were growing up or earlier with them. It might be friends that you know now in your new identity, uh, who may not know anything about your background, but can talk about how you live your life and what your gender identity is now. Gender identity is not a medical issue. It's about your personal identity. Now, there might be medical aspects to your case, either 
because you've had a medical transition or some other intervention at some stage, perhaps even some intervention that wasn't your choice and was against your wishes. So there might be medical evidence that's relevant, but gender identity is not about having a doctor or a psychiatrist say what your gender identity is. You need to talk about your gender identity as it is in the United Kingdom. How do you describe it now? And whether there's any limits now on how you express that gender identity. You might be told by people who are trying to be helpful that if you have a gender identity, you must live in that identity in the UK. But we know that some people don't do that because they can't until they know that they're going to be safe here. You need to explain what your situation is and live the life that is true for you and explain your decisions. And so long as you are open about explaining how your life is and why it's the way it is, hopefully you will be believed. You need to talk in your statement and in your interview about what would happen if you went back to your own country of origin. Would you be able to live in your gender identity in the way that you want to? If not, what would be constraining you? What's going to be stopping you from doing that? And how that would make you feel? Those are really important things because being a refugee and claiming asylum is about what will happen to you if you go back in future. You need to talk about what you think will happen when you go back and who you fear. Your fear may be of the state authorities, the government, the police in your own country, but it might be more specific. It might be that you have a problem with your family and that your family are not accepting of your gender identity. Whatever is in your story is what you say. Again, there's no right answer and there's no wrong answer. But if the problem is from your family or from a smaller group, perhaps your local community, you do need to think about questions like why you can't go and get help from the police. Now that may seem obvious to you because you may know that the police won't help you, but you need to explain that to the Home Office so that they understand the situation that you think you would face. You also need to talk about whether there is somewhere else you could go and live in your country. You only get asylum in a country like the United Kingdom if you can't be safe anywhere in your own country. So if the problem is from your government, that might extend across the whole of your country, but if it's just from your family or your local community, then you need to explain why you couldn't be safe by simply going somewhere else in the country, away from them.